Whether you've been playing New Horizons for over four years now like I have, or maybe you've even just started playing recently, I feel like there's still so much to learn with the game. There are so many tips and tricks out there that can help you with your New Horizons experience, whether that's to motivate you to play more around your island, or to help you get started with the game for the first time. So I've decided to make a compilation of some of my favourite tips and tricks that I've shared on this channel throughout the years that can help you with New Horizons. These are generally things that I wish I had known sooner or when I started playing the game for the first time, so I hope it can help you out. If you're excited for some tips and tricks, be sure to leave a like on the video and let's jump right into this. Decorating is obviously a huge part of Animal Crossing New Horizons and many of us use our items for aesthetical reasons rather than practical ones. There's nothing wrong with this of course, we want our islands to look beautiful, but there are certain things in the game that you should have on your island regardless of your aesthetic. These can drastically improve your island life and become effectively essential for anyone who's playing day to day. Most of these haven't even been in the game since the start either and were introduced in later updates. So let's take a look at exactly what your island needs right now. Ever since the game has launched, we've had an ABD available to us in resident services, but nowhere else. Thankfully the 2.0 update changed this and now we can get our own ABDs by redeeming our Nook Miles. Although these are fairly expensive items to get, they are one of the most essential items you can have in Animal Crossing New Horizons in my opinion. After all, bells play such an important part in the game, so having one of these readily available so you can withdraw bells at any time you want or even deposit them is definitely something you need. Not to mention the fact that your friends can actually use these, so if they're coming to visit you and maybe they want to purchase turnips or just do something else with their bells on your island, now it is much easier for them to do so. In terms of where these need to go on your island, I would highly recommend putting one of them outside of Nook's Cranny, a place where you'll be spending your hard-earned bells quite a lot. Another one would definitely be the airport, as like I said, if you have any visitors who need to withdraw bells, make it convenient for them so that they can access this right away. Having one in your house is not a bad idea either in my opinion, I feel like this could definitely be useful and this tends to be where I see people put the ABD the most, but I think having them outdoors somewhere is really good, even if you do decide to tuck them away because maybe ABDs don't really fit your island's theme. I have mine pretty well hidden outside of Nook's Cranny, I don't feel like it stands out or looks bad or anything like that despite having quite a natural island, so definitely get some ABDs on your island, you won't regret it, they are highly necessary. Another really fantastic quality of life upgrade we got in the 2.0 update was storage sheds. To get yourself one of these you will have to have spent at least 500,000 bells on your storage with Tom Nook. It's not the easiest item to get in the game, but once you do, you can craft these fellas and you can customize them as well so they can fit a variety of themes on your island, and oh boy, these are definitely one of the most essential items in all of Animal Crossing New Horizons. They make it so, so convenient to deposit items that you want out of your inventory. They make it so easy to get items out. The UI here, in my opinion, is a lot better than the storage in your home. So I'd even recommend having one of these in your house so you don't have to use the option. But generally speaking, in my opinion, rather than placing these around your island, you should actually keep one of these in your pockets at all times. That means when you want to do some work on your island by placing some new items, or maybe you want to pick up some old ones and put them away, you can bring your storage shed to wherever this is, drop it down, put the items straight in, or take them out, and boom, it's done. This means you don't have to take the time to walk all the way back to your house, or walk to another point where the storage shed might be on your island. Yes, it will take up another slot in your inventory, but in my opinion this is probably the most useful tool you could have in Animal Crossing New Horizons. There's probably lots of us who carry around a net and a fishing rod with us, yet don't plan on using them every single day, whereas a storage shed is something that you probably could find a use for at least once a day. Even if you're just combing the beach for seashells, or just trying to collect items that you've had lying around for months on end, it's so so convenient to have a storage shed with you wherever you go. Storage has always been a big thing in the Animal Crossing games, and honestly in the older entries it wasn't so good, in fact it could be really inconvenient to store things. So I'm definitely happy to say that in Animal Crossing New Horizons it couldn't be more convenient having this storage shed item. As I said, I definitely think this is one of the most essential items that you need on your island. 
One that has been around a little bit longer but is still incredibly underrated in my opinion happens to be the pipes. The pipes have the unique functionality of allowing you to effectively teleport from one location to another by setting up your pipes in strategic locations. This means that you could put one pipe at your house and another one directly at resident services so that you could get there in a matter of seconds rather than having to walk all the way there. That definitely makes them one of the best items in the entire game and something that all players could really utilize. I feel like the pipes are a bit underrated however because they are Mario themed items, something that a lot of people might feel like clashes with their island aesthetic. You can't customize the pipes and there are no other similar items that have the same functionality. I guess Nintendo really wanted to make these items unique and special to celebrate Mario's anniversary and that crossover update, but it definitely would have been good if we could have gotten other types of items that maybe looked more natural and fit other island themes that we could also use with the same functionality. Even if they don't fit with your island's aesthetic though, I definitely feel like it's still worth having them, but maybe instead just hiding them somewhere. You could hide them behind a cliff or even behind a tree, just as long as they're near somewhere convenient that you want to basically be able to teleport to. We've never really seen any functionality like this in any other Animal Crossing game or with any other type of item, so it is a really necessary item to have in my opinion, one that will improve your island life a lot. I just will have to agree with people that I feel like design wise it's not one of my favourite items and I wish it wasn't so Mario specific. Back to something that was introduced in the 2.0 update, we have the cooking stoves. Now typically I feel like people actually have these indoors, but having them outdoors could really help their potential shine. Cooking is a great new feature which allows you to make a ton of dishes that you could gift to your villagers or you could eat for energy, and the energy part is definitely one of the more important things. Having the energy you get from food to smash rocks around your island or dig up tons of trees is really important. So if you have to spend the time buying these food items from Nook's Cranny or eating fruit one by one or even going into your house to cook things, that's definitely not as convenient in my opinion. So having these cooking stoves out somewhere on your island is a really good idea. That way you can just head over to one and start cooking when you're working on your island. There are some which are even specifically designed for outdoors, like this camping one for example. In the past, I've actually seen quite a lot of people who say, well, why even bother cooking to get energy when I can just eat some fruit? But honestly, this is so much slower. I'm not necessarily saying that everything needs to be super fast in Animal Crossing. After all, it's a fairly slow paced game. But that doesn't mean that things need to be inconvenient either. Nintendo gave us this cooking feature for a reason. Cooking also gets you Nook Miles, and like I said, you can gift them to your villagers as well, and they tend to really like those. So having a stove outdoors on your island to make lots of dishes is a really great idea in my opinion and it will help you make a lot of progress in the game. Nook Miles are probably one of the most valuable resources in all of Animal Crossing New Horizons. Unlike Bells, a lot of us don't have a ton of these and they aren't as easy to farm as Bells are. You can't exactly pick them up from a treasure island either, so there's a lot of people who definitely need more ways to get Nook Miles. Whether you need to redeem something from the Nook Stop or maybe you want to go on a cap and boat ride, getting Nook Miles is really helpful and this new trick which came about since the 2.0 update is one of the best in the entire game. It should allow you to easily farm a whole bunch of Nook Miles which will be really helpful. To do this new trick, you need to head over to Resident Services and have a talk with Tom Nook. Now provided that you have Happy Home Paradise, you should have the option to remodel your villagers' homes. This is a really cool new feature which they introduced in the 2.0 update and it comes with designing a certain amount of homes in Happy Home Paradise. Now you can talk to Tom Nook to do this and when you do, he will explain that you can pay 9,000 bells to renovate a home and in return he will actually give you 1,000 Nook Miles. So effectively, you can convert your bells into Nook Miles, which is definitely a really good use for them. However, the trick goes further than this as well, as once you actually start renovating a villager's home, you don't even need to do anything for it to have counted towards your renovation. I suppose you could just change around one item or such, but Tom Nook will count you simply going in there as you do in the renovation, and then the next day he will send you over 1000 Nook Miles. 
This means that whether you time travel or you just want to do this day by day, it's a really nice way of farming Nook Miles and basically converting your bells. So many of us have a ton of bells that we don't know what to do with now, so a mere 9,000 each time for 1,000 Nook Miles is definitely worth it. For example, that is worth one entire cap and trip, or you can just add them up to do whatever you want from the Nook Mile Redemption Machine. A lot of people have definitely shared with me that they feel like bells aren't that useful in Animal Crossing New Horizons once they've gone to a certain point in the game, so honestly this could really be the best use for them. You can also head to Apio in Paradise and use the Pokey Machine to convert your bells into the Pokey currency as well, which again is something you definitely might want to do if you want to get your hands on lots of those special Happy in Paradise items that you can get from the store. Of course, you are limited to how much you can do per day and the rate does change every day, so you might want to keep that in mind. I've seen so many people ask for good ways of getting more Nook Miles, and although there isn't really an exploit for doing so, the fact that you can do this simple trick just to quickly get yourself some Nook Miles is really handy. If you don't have Happy on Paradise, then sadly you're not going to be able to use this method, which is definitely a shame, but for those of us who do have it, you definitely should be making use of this every in-game day, as it's really a great way to rack up those Nook Miles. I personally don't feel like there are any other ways that really get you Nook Miles as fast as this. One of the most common and enduring complaints about Animal Crossing New Horizons is that the villager dialogue just doesn't seem that good, and villagers often repeat what they say quite a lot. Anytime there's a discussion about the game and the problems that it has, this is something that always seems to come up with people. Now, I definitely agree that the dialogue in many of the past Animal Crossing games was a lot better than Animal Crossing New Horizons, there just felt like a lot more of it. However, I actually don't believe the dialogue in Animal Crossing New Horizons is nearly as bad as a lot of people seem to say. In fact, there's probably a ton more dialogue in the game than you ever realized, so I wanted to use this video as an opportunity to bring light to some of the rare and unique dialogue which you can get in Animal Crossing New Horizons, which hopefully should make your villagers feel a bit more interesting. A lot of dialogue in the game is honestly very situational, and you have to do certain things to be able to see it. You won't just be able to get all of the interesting and rare dialogue just by chatting to your villagers as you see them around the island, there's certain things that you need to do first. The huge version 2.0 update which we got in November actually introduced a ton of new dialogue. There were so many new pieces of dialogue introduced in the code of the game, whether these are just things you can see your villagers say around the island, or they're done in special circumstances, there's honestly so much added, so generally speaking nowadays you should see your villagers just say more unique things around the island in general, but what are some of the more unique and rarer pieces of dialogue that you can get? Well in terms of unique, of course you do get special dialogue when a villager comes over to visit your house, they'll say special things to you that you can't really see them say around the island, and even comment on things in your house. In fact, if you have a cockroach, your villagers will even make note of that and leave immediately, or if they're a lazy villager, they'll actually talk about how it's a friend, but they'll still leave. Of course, this also applies to if a villager has invited you over to their home. This is a new type of interaction which you can see, and you better get some special unique dialogue from this that you won't see every single day. Not to mention the fact that you can get a ton of original and unique dialogue in the roost. I mean, even villagers who previously lived on your island will remember you if you see them there and scan them in. These are all really cool and a great way to get lots of unique dialogue, but they're not exactly rare. They're things that people have probably seen already, so what are some of the rarer and unique pieces of dialogue which you actually need to go out of your way to see? Well, some of the rarer dialogue in the game is actually tied to the outfit that you're wearing. Villagers will make certain comments when you're wearing a very specific outfit. For example, if you're dressed up fully as maybe a rabbit or a cat, your villagers will make a special comment about that. If the villager is the same species as what you're dressed up as, they'll even mention that, so that is very specific and unique dialogue. That means that your outfits actually have their own kind of little hidden feature, because you'll only see this dialogue ever when you're wearing these outfits. I I know some of you might just wear the same outfits day in and day out, so you might not ever get the chance to see this dialogue. I mean, I basically wear the same outfit for all of my videos, so I haven't even seen this dialogue myself, but it's definitely really cool, and I love the fact that it's specific to certain types of animals as well. 
Another really cute one related to your outfits is your villagers will even mention the fact that you've gifted them something which matches with your own outfit, which is super cute. They'll basically mention how you guys are kind of like twins now, which is adorable. And it just makes me want to go out there and give Bob a special matching outfit with me so he can kind of look like a mini crossing channel. I think that would be absolutely adorable. And it's dialogue like this that I really appreciate in Animal Crossing New Horizons. And it's honestly something that I have never really seen many people mention before. It's definitely not something that I've seen in the comments of these videos. So it's something that I find really interesting. I mean, there's even special dialogue for if you dress up exactly like Jack with a full outfit on Halloween, your villagers will make mention of this and kind of think that you literally are him. So there is lots of really specific dialogue related to the outfits that you're wearing around your island. Sometimes villagers will even mention the specific achievements that you've made in the game, which again is pretty rare dialogue, but something super cool to see. For example, if you manage to catch all of the bugs in the game, your villagers will give you congratulations on that and note your achievement, which just makes it feel like what you're doing around the island actually matters a lot more, and they aren't just completely passive to it. I definitely think that's a really neat piece of dialogue that I personally haven't seen myself, but maybe I need to actually start chatting to my villagers a little bit more since I did complete my Critopedia fully. I'm not sure what other achievements they know, I'm assuming if you catch all the sea creatures and fish, but if you've seen any of these, definitely let me know down in the comments section, because I'd love to know what other achievements in the game they make note of. Honestly, some of the best writing and dialogue I find in the game is villagers talking to each other. You don't see this all the time, but if you ever see villagers chatting right to each other like here, then it's definitely worth going and having a conversation with them just to see what they say. It can be so interesting to get their different perspectives, and I feel like their personalities are shown off a lot better here. In fact, Dobie is being kind of brutal in this conversation, which does kind of remind me more of the older villagers from the Animal Crossing GameCube game, where they would just be so harsh all the time. I don't know if someone different wrote the interactions when it's between two villagers, but honestly, to me, they actually feel a lot better than some of the dialogue that you get just normally chatting to your villagers. So if you haven't been keeping up with their specific conversations when you see them, I definitely recommend that you start doing that. It's even really cool when villagers get mad with each other because they'll make specific note of the arguments they have. Renee won't just walk around and be like, grr, I'm annoyed for whatever reason. She'll specifically mention that Sasha is the one who set her off. And I really like that. It makes it feel like your villagers feel a little bit more alive and they have actual genuine relationships with each other. Speaking of the personalities in the game though, you may not run into much dialogue if you tend to have a ton of the same personality on your island. This is honestly a problem that I see on a lot of islands where people might have four of the same personality of villager, maybe because they like how those villagers look, which is completely fair enough. However, it does mean that you're less likely to get original dialogue because all of the personalities have their own specific dialogue and the same personalities might repeat the same things again and again, especially during events. So I always feel like it's really worth it to diversify how many villagers you have in terms of their personalities. Of course, there is going to be some overlap no matter what, but I think having all of the different personalities at least, so having one of each of the eight, is really worth doing, and that's the best way to get a lot of unique dialogue in terms of the specific personalities. One of the best places to get unique and original dialogue by far though has to be the archipelago in Happy Home Paradise. You can see so many villagers here at once and honestly they say so many really interesting things. Nintendo really did well with the writing here which is honestly no surprise because it's very similar to Happy Home Designer, which had a ton of really great writing. So you'll definitely want to make sure you're talking to lots of villagers that you see here, because undoubtedly they'll say unique things that you probably haven't seen said many times. Especially if you go in the buildings as well. Oh my gosh, I love the interactions in the buildings. Villagers say so many funny things, and again, it really does feel like a lot of different writing went on here, which I do appreciate. Of course though, I do get that this isn't on your main island and a lot of these aren't necessarily your own villages so it might feel like a bit of a shame to have to go here to get a lot of unique dialogue but I think some of the points that I made in this video do show that there is unique dialogue to be found throughout the entire game and it's not just found in super specific places although sometimes you do need to do very specific things to unlock it. I will stand by the fact that I think the dialogue in Animal Crossing New Horizons is actually pretty decent and there's definitely some really good writing on there. I really don't think it's as bad as a lot of people say. Of course though, I do think that it could be better. I always feel like there's room for improvement and I do wish the villagers feel more lively, but I really do not believe that the dialogue in New Horizons is that much worse than Animal Crossing New Leaf. 
especially in terms of what the villagers actually do around your island, because in New Leaf, the villagers often used to just stand very motionless, not doing very much at all, where at least now in New Horizons, you can see them with special tools, doing little cute activities around your island, like running around or singing. So they've definitely improved in a lot of ways, but I feel like they do have more work to do on the villagers for the next installment. The villagers that live around our island are a core part of the Animal Crossing experience. Seeing them wandering around, doing all kinds of cute little activities around the island is definitely one of my favorite parts of the game, even though sometimes I wish they did do a little bit more. Well, recently when interacting with my villagers, I discovered a very interesting feature which I haven't seen many people notice at all. In fact, this feature seems to be pretty well hidden within the game, yet it's definitely a really cool one, and I think a lot of you will enjoy this a lot. So, let's get into this. Now, this feature is related to the many tools that you can get in Animal Crossing New Horizons, like the nets and the shovels, the watering cans, etc. Now, sometimes when you're going around your island, you may actually see your villagers holding these items, and it's always cool to see them doing things with their little tools, even though they can't really use them in a functional way. Well, I've recently learned that you can actually gift your villagers any tool that you would like in the game, and the really cool part is that they will actually use them. This means you can see your villagers using all kinds of special tools like, for example, the outdoorsy shovel, or the colourful nets, maybe the elephant watering can, all of these special tools which you would never usually see them getting, you can gift to them, and then that will become their new permanent tool around the island. This effectively means you can make your villagers a lot more interesting by giving them tools which you just can't usually see them having. By default, your villagers will carry around the most basic tools, but you can actually give them the ones that you can get from Nook's Cranny, like the ones that I mentioned earlier. I really love this little fact, it's quite a simple thing, but honestly, it does make your island feel more custom and interesting, especially given the fact that you can actually customize these tools to match the colors of villagers around your island. So if you want a certain villager to match a certain color scheme with their tool, you can do this, and I think that's really awesome. The only tool that I don't believe this works for is the slingshot. I personally have never ever seen my villagers use the slingshot around the island, so there's no point gifting them that as far as I can tell. But still, given how many interesting tools there are to gift your villagers, you'll surely not run out of ones that you can match up with the different characters you've got living on your island. Another really cool fact that I learned also is that you can even gift your villagers golden tools if you would like to as well. Now, you may not want to do this because of course golden tools are much rarer and they may require more resources to craft than say the usual tools, and of course you can't buy these anywhere in the game also. But if you want your villagers to look even fancier than usual, give them a golden tool and they will use it around the island. There's even more to it as well, your villagers will hold their custom tools during the special fishing tourneys and bug offs that happen around your island throughout the year. This is awesome and it's really cool to see certain villagers with their special tools whilst every other village just has the most basic boring net or fishing rod in the game. Again, it's such a simple thing, but it really does make the characters feel a lot more interesting. I mean, why would they all have the same basic tools when you could just customize them and give them really cool things? You can do that with their outfits, so why not do it with their tools as well? I think it's a really cool feature. I did try to test this with some other holdable items in the game. For example, sometimes you can see your villagers holding dumbbells around the island and doing little workouts. So I thought, why not give them a dumbbell and maybe they'll change the one that they use but sadly, it does not seem like this is the case. I think it would have been really cool if you could have actually gifted your villagers the handheld items like balloons and stuff like that and seen them hold them around the island. That would have been great, but sadly, that is not a thing you can do in Animal Crossing New Horizons. Minor update, maybe? That would be a cool one and not too difficult for Nintendo to do, so I actually would really like that. However, there is one more special type of tool that your villagers can customize around the island, and that is umbrellas. You can gift your villagers any umbrella you want, and they will actually pull them out when it's raining. That will become their new permanent umbrella. I love this once again. I just think it's really neat that you can change up your villagers' accessories however you would like, really, to really match their characters. I mean, we all know that sometimes the villager outfits don't properly match the characters. What was Nintendo thinking with some of them, you know? But you can customize all of this as much as you'd want, and that's something that I really love about New Horizons. 
So let me know, are you going to be gifting your villagers some custom tools? Are you maybe going to give them a golden tool, perhaps for your favorite villager? They may feel like the classiest character on the entire island. Let me know down in the comments section below. Collecting items is one of the biggest parts of Animal Crossing New Horizons. So naturally services like Nukazon and Treasure Islands have been incredibly popular. These can be helpful ways to get your hands on some of the trickier to obtain items in the game. But what about unobtainable items? Well, like the name says, you shouldn't really be able to get these, but in the case of free, you can, and it's actually kind of bad. Most treasure islands will generate items onto their islands, which means they have the ability to generate a few items that under normal gameplay circumstances would be unobtainable. And if you happen to pick one of these up for yourself, you'll probably end up regretting it. So what exactly are these items you should be avoiding, and what happens if you end up getting one? These items are the Head Mannequin, Torso Mannequin, and Bottoms Mannequin. If you've ever played the DLC, then these might seem familiar. You actually use these when building the apparel shop. In this instance, they act almost like regular items rather than a special tool or something. You simply take them out of the designing menu to use them in your build. You have no way of bringing these back to your own island or even purchasing them from anywhere, which is a shame because we had mannequins back in New Leaf and I just miss Gracie so much. So yeah, these items are purely intended for use in this one shop in Happy Home Paradise, not our own islands. So when people generate these items onto their treasure islands, it causes a bit of a problem for anyone who happens to pick them up, because these items aren't supposed to end up in your inventory. You can place them down around your island, but as far as I know, they don't really even do anything. They're sadly effectively useless outside of Happy Home Paradise, just as Nintendo intended, or Nintended, I guess. You'll soon find that getting rid of them is also really difficult. For a start, you can't gift them to your villagers. I guess they just don't want to be cursed either. You can't sell them to Timmy and Tommy. They have no idea what to do with it, come on. This includes the source drop-off box too, so you're out of luck there. You can't even throw them away in a bin. Even the rubbish doesn't want these mannequins. So what exactly do you do if you end up with these? Well, as far as I know, there are only two ways of getting rid of them. The easiest is the first, but it will require more waiting around. You'll need to have unlocked terraforming, which means you'll also have unlocked the cleanup tool. This will allow you to clean up items that are surrounding you, automatically sending them to recycling box in resident services. This is where the mannequin parts will end up, until eventually they're cycled out in favor of other items. This could take upwards of 30 days I believe, but at least they aren't stuck in your inventory. The other is a little bit more complicated. This will require you creating a new character on your island, which you can have a total of 8. They'll have to pick up the mannequins you've placed down, put them in their inventory, and then delete themselves. R.I.P. This should get rid of the items permanently though, but it's a lot of effort. So yeah, you probably don't want to pick up these items. Whilst they won't exactly corrupt your game or anything, it's still bad news. You'll either have to deal with them stuck in your inventory, recycling box, or have to go through the effort of creating and deleting an entire character just to see them gone, and they're useless. So this is definitely something to watch out for when using treasure islands in Animal Crossing New Horizons. Well, I hope you enjoyed those tips and tricks just as much as I did sharing them. If you have any tips yourself, make sure to leave them in the comment section down below to help out other players. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to comment Bob's Gang down below. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, and if you haven't already, consider subscribing and turning on channel notifications for more videos.